apply and it looks like uh, like that's done. It takes a little bit longer. It is a bigger partition. Okay, so it's going to try to mount that. As you can see, it tried to mount the drive. And you have the little lock there, so it tried to mount it. We're just going to click unmount. Uh, let's see, I got the wrong one. And what we're going to do here after we've unmounted it is we're going to select the FAT16 partition and go to properties. And we have to make sure it's a bootable drive. That's one of the requirements of making sure that on the Z50 uh, the compact flash works as appropriate. So we selected boot and as you can see I'm hovering over the flags where it says boot and I'm just going to click apply. Let's don't forget to click apply after you make set the boot setting because you know that's the only way the change is going to take place. So that's occurred and I clicked OK and we're back in partition manager and at this stage again we have a compact flash card with two partitions the first one is DOS at about 20 megs um, that is probably the minimum if you really wanted to do just the kernels for NetBSD but I like to have the entire distribution um, in fact I like to have every version of, of most distributions available to me so I can play with them on, on the Z50 um, but you might just want the latest version I guess right now it's 5.0.1 and that's fine too. So the second partition is an EXT2 partition. It looks like they're both mounted here because the operating system just tries to mount them automatically. Again, the first flag for boot. And at this stage, we are done with uh, creating the compact flashcard. So we're going to close partition manager, close our terminal window, and uh, that compact flashcard is now ready to be extracted. And uh, we can load what we need to load to um, get uh, everything ready for the Z50 install. So what we're going to be doing after we've created the compact flash card is we're going to load information on the MS-DOS partition so that we can take out the compact flash card and put it into the IBM Z50 so that we can start the process of loading NetBSD on that machine. So as you can see here, I've loaded the compact flash card uh, in my standard file browser of Ubuntu. You can do this in any operating system. Windows is fine. And uh, the next step is to uh, verify that in this case the 20 or 20x or in this case multiple 100 megabyte if you have a large CF card that that partition is mounted successfully and we see that it is in this case it's telling me it's empty. So I'm going to go to the source where I put the information about NetBSD and I happen to have that in documents and we have some NetBSD info. Now you might be wondering where I got this information from. Well, there's a directory here called HPC MIPS, HPC MIPS 501. I, I put in the 501 so I understand the version that I'm installing. And this information came from going to NetBSD.org, I believe it is and you can go to uh, downloading the downloading section where you can select the ISOs or the full distribution via FTP where you'll locate um, the latest version of NetBSD and you'll scroll down to the section that says HPC MIPS. Now it'll just be a few directory structures for you to get to HPC MIPS. Make sure you're within the 5.0.1 or latest release of NetBSD um, and you can just essentially grab everything that's in that level and put that onto a hard drive or whatever makes sense uh, that will eventually reach the compact flash card. So that structure looks very similar to this here and I'm just going to highlight that information. We have a directory called binary, a one called installation, then some install, some text information. Binary has uh, a lot of other useful info like kernel and sets and installation has its own pieces of information. But first things first, we're going to go to the root of our NetBSD and we're going to copy the information over. Now I'll talk about the other directories that are there in just a moment, but first we're just going to copy the information over uh, to the 24 meg file. So I would just click copy at that point and it would copy the information over. In this case, of course, um, my 24 megabytes is not large enough to hold um, this distribution. So really what you might need if you don't want the full distribution on the machine 
or on the compact flashcard is simply uh, simply three files. Uh, the first one is in HPC MIPS binary. I'm sorry, HPC MIPS installation, and then we have uh, NetBSD. Uh, .gz. Now these are .gz files, so don't worry about um, de uh, decompressing them. GZ can be decompressed with WinRAR or other applications. Uh, don't worry about those; they have to stay in .g in .gz format. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab NetBSD GZ, and again, I'm only doing this because I have a small compact flashcard. So I'm going to put NetBSD GZ on there. That's the first thing. And then there's some other files in that installation directory that we are just in where we grab NetBSD. And that file is uh, pbsdboot1.exe. So I'm going to grab that file as well. And I'm going to go right there and put that on the compact flashcard. Now, this allows you to, believe it or not, just with these two files, to install NetBSD on your Z50. There's one other file that you're going to need in order to run NetBSD after you've completed the installation. As you probably know or don't know, NetBSD has multiple kernels. The first kernel is the one we're looking at here, NetBSD.gz, and then there's a second kernel, uh, which is the boot kernel instead of the install kernel. And this gets a little complicated the first time you do it, but just remember that you know that's the structure that's in place. So in order to make things simple, I'm just going to create something that says install kernel, and we're going to make another directory here called boot kernel. Okay, and of course this is my install kernel, so I'm going to put that in there. Keeps it real simple. And now I'm going to grab my boot kernel. Well, the boot kernel in the 501 release is a very good boot kernel. However, um, as of May of 2009, there was a very, very small bug that made it so that booting off of Compact Flash may be a problem for some systems. I happen to have found it was an issue for my Z50. There's a really quick fix for that, and that's that you look for on the NetBSD site for the same uh, uh, HPC MIPS 5.0.1 release, and there's going to be a special boot kernel in there that's called this NetBSD5-PCIC.gz. It's the only one of its kind on NetBSD. The 5 stands for version 5, and PCIC is specifically for this release. So I'm going to copy that .gz into boot kernel. And we're just going to do that like that. And this keeps the files kind of in a more elegant structure so that now you're ready to install NetBSD. And once you're done installing, um, you would run uh, PBSD with the boot kernel. So we're pretty much done with creating the structure of our compact flashcard. It's ready to go, and we just plug it into our Z50 to get started. So what we're looking at here is the screen of an IBM Z50. Uh, this is a, well, was a very popular um, Windows CE device, I believe running 2.11. Uh, that's an HPC. Uh, so it's a, actually a full mini laptop, and uh, it's got all kinds of nifty features like compact flash, uh, PCMCA capability, uh, external monitor, uh, serial port output, uh, lithium-ion battery for multiple hours of usage. And uh, the the real benefit about this is this this is one of the original net uh, netbooks as we call them today uh, from the uh, from the late 1990s. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to install um, uh, a more modern operating system than Windows C and it's going to be uh, NetBSD. Uh, which is designed, uh, it's a Unix operating system or Linux operating system uh, that's designed for small pieces, uh, small hardware components uh, such as the Z50 and other uh, palm top uh, miniaturized laptop kind of solutions. So uh, we're going to start that now. Uh, we've booted into the uh, raw Windows C. There's nothing special about this. Just put the battery in, turn on the power, and this is where we're at right now. So we're going to go through the process of loading a specially made compact flash that we're going to cover in another video, how that was created. So I'm going to start that now. And we're going to go to uh, the storage card. 
and we're going to uh, we're going to find the uh, 